This is the view of the posterior abdominal wall with the retroperitoneal organs. This is the right kidney, this is the left kidney and in the middle region over the posteriormost aspect you have the vertebrae. You can clearly see that both the kidneys are located in a paravertebral position. For seeing the development of the gut tube, we are going to concentrate on the upper part of this posterior abdominal wall and we are going to draw these two kidneys with the vertebrae in between. So the primitive mid gut is lying in the midline in front of the posterior abdominal wall. So consider this as the posterior abdominal wall that we have seen just before. So the mid gut considered as a cylindrical structure which is lying over the midline in this region. So we have the anterior abdominal wall in front of that. Posteriorly you have the posterior abdominal wall. So this gut is connected to the posterior abdominal wall by dorsal peritoneal folds and to the ventral or anterior abdominal wall by ventral peritoneal folds. Later what happens? After the region of the foregut, of course you know the gut consists of foregut, midgut and hindgut. So after the region of the foregut, the peritoneal folds that connect the gut to the anterior abdominal wall will disappear. So that only the foregut region will have a connection to the anterior abdominal wall. And now from here onwards, we call this anterior connection as ventral mesogastrium and this posterior connection as dorsal mesogastrium. We will discuss the further details with the help of a model. So in this model, this upper part over here is the lower end of esophagus. This fusiform shape over here that is the stomach region and this lower segment is the initial few centimeters of the developing duodenum. So if you place the model in the midline like this, the region that is anterior to the foregut region, that is the region over here, that is the ventral mesogastrium and the region that is posterior to the model over here, that is the dorsal mesogastrium. In later development, the ventral mesogastrium, within the substance of the ventral mesogastrium, the liver develops and within the substance of the dorsal mesogastrium, there will be the development of the spleen. We have added the liver and spleen into that model now. Don't forget, the peritoneal fold that we are mentioning over here is double layered. The liver is placed between the stomach and the anterior abdominal wall so that now the ventral mesogastrium is now divided into two. The part of the ventral mesogastrium that lies anterior to the liver and between the anterior abdominal wall, between the liver and the anterior abdominal wall, that is known as the falciform ligament. The region of the ventral mesogastrium that is lying between the stomach and the liver that is known as the lesser omentum. And moving backwards, this is the dorsal mesogastrium, the inner area. So spleen develops within the dorsal mesogastrium. Now the area of the dorsal mesogastrium that is extending between the stomach and as you already know this is the abdomen. So over the upper part there will be developing diaphragm between there. So the area of the dorsal mesogastrium that is extending between the stomach and diaphragm that will be the gastrophrenic ligament and the area of the dorsal mesogastrium that is extending between the stomach and the spleen over here. In between them you have the gastrosplenic ligament. Further development of the ligaments we will see in next section. On further development the stomach will undergo rotation in a vertical axis that is this axis so that the stomach will move like this and the associated structures will move accordingly. In this position it is clearly understandable that the anterior border of the stomach now becomes the right border and the posterior border of the stomach now becomes the left border. And now the liver is coming to the right of the stomach 
and from the liver to the anterior abdominal wall this ligament this part of the ventral mesogastrium now becomes the falciform ligament as you have mentioned earlier and along with this movement of the stomach you can see the posterior attachment line of attachment of the dorsal mesentery over here that is also shifted to the right side to the anterior aspect of the right kidney at this position at this stage the stomach also undergoes differential growth over the different aspects different borders of the stomach one more point to add is the lower part of the dorsal mesentery that is extending from the left border now that dorsal mesentery that is going to form the greater omentum this is the somewhat developed view of the stomach now this is comparable to the adult shape so the anterior border which was present over here the earlier anterior border later it becomes the lesser curvature of the stomach the posterior border will become the greater curvature of the stomach it is obvious that the greater curvature has been differentially grown enormously than the lesser curvature so the mesogastrium that is the dorsal mesogastrium that is attached to the greater curvature of the stomach will also grow enormously than compared with the mesogastrium that, that is attached to the anterior aspect so because of this disparity in the growth of omentum over the dorsal mesogastrium that will form a massive layer over here that will form the greater omentum now because of this shape shifting and the rotation the spleen over the posterior aspect which you can see over here for better view now it going to lie between the right kidney and the stomach We, for looking into that cavity we better take a superior view so this is the stomach over here and posteriorly we have the spleen over this region and if you look at the superior aspect you can obviously see a space which is now formed because of the folding of dorsal mesentery over the posterior aspect of this structure that is the stomach now the region or part of the dorsal mesentery that it lies, lies between the greater curvature of stomach and the spleen that is known as gastrosplenic ligament and between the spleen and the kidney over here this is the kidney in the located in the posterior abdominal wall between the spleen and the kidney there is the part of the dorsal mesogastrium that is known as the leno renal ligament now as the take home message there are a multiple li peritoneal ligaments are now formed because of the folding and rotation of the gut so you will start from the anterior abdominal wall so here we have the anterior abdominal wall over here and between the anterior abdominal wall and the liver you have this particular ligament that is the falciform ligament and the lower free margin of this falciform ligament is known as the ligamentum teres hepatis now between the liver and the lesser curvature of the stomach we have this part of this ventral earlier part of ventral mesogastrium and that is known as the lesser omentum now attaching to the greater curvature of the stomach over this aspect we have the greater omentum now between the stomach and the spleen over here we have gastrosplenic ligament and from the upper part of the stomach to the diaphragm above we have the gastrophrenic ligament and from the spleen to the kidney in the anterior abdominal wall we have the leno renal ligament finally as we already know there is a space that was formed over the posterior aspect of the stomach over here that was the lesser sac and we can enter the lesser sac from the anterior aspect 
through this opening over here that is located just to the left or posterior aspect of the free margin of this structure over here this structure is the lesser momentum this is the free margin of lesser momentum by passing or by probing through the space we will be reaching to the space that is behind the stomach that is the lesser sac we have seen we have demonstrated the important ligaments that is developing in the ventral and dorsal mesogastrium over this region and the area that is appearing white over here will be disappearing during development and over this aspect upper there is the diaphragm and the part of the liver part of the peritoneal folds that is connecting the upper aspect of the liver over here will be forming the coronary ligaments and over this aspect that will be forming the left triangular ligament 